Hello, this is Matt Smirnoff from Gemini Softworks and JetForceGeminiApex.com and I'm going to be doing a, uh, a series of video tutorials on 2D game making using Multimedia Fusion 2. I'm just going to jump right into it right now. So we go to File, New, and that brings up everything we need to make a game. So I'm going to click on the frame and right away I'm going to double click and choose an active object. And right from the start I'm going to rename it player. This will be our player. I'm going to double click, clear the frame, that would be this button right up here, clear. <clears throat> click the paint bucket which you should see, well no, first I'm going to resize it and change the height to 64 pixels tall, I'm going to make it just a solid red color. Okay, I'm going to go over here to the properties, I'm going to click movement, then I'm going to go to platform. Now I'm going to edit some of these values right away, you can edit these to whatever you want them to be. I'm just going to change them because the default speeds are a little slow. I'm going to go with 70, leave those the same, maybe change jump strength or gravity, I'll leave that at 50, but I'm going to change jump strength to 100. Okay, that should be good. Now I'm going to double click in empty space again. I'm going to choose a backdrop object. I'm going to drag that over here. I'm going to increase the size of this to 64 pixels by 64 pixels. I'm going to clear it, and I'm just going to make this, I don't know, purple. Okay, I'm going to place this down here. Then I'm going to go over here to the whatever this is called, runtime options, and change the obstacle type to obstacle. This means that our player will be able to collide with it. So I'll place this guy over here, and then I will want to have this go across. And a quick way to do that is to duplicate and change the column number to, I don't know, 6? Yeah, that's good enough. So that's an easy way to do it. You can also drag and drop, you know, obstacles this way as well. Alright, so go ahead and play your level so far. You'll notice immediately our player just falls right through. Now you may be wondering why that why that's happening. And that's because it's not automatic. We have to set up our events. Now over here <coughs> at the event editor, we'll click that, and this is how we will build our game click new condition and go over to and right click the player go to collisions backdrop so the player collides with the background we will right click our player or under our player um, in this event go movement stop so right away that will make it so our player will collide with the background and right away we collide we can jump with the shift key that is by default you may change it if you wish to but I'm just gonna leave everything default for this particular tutorial so we can move back and forth and all that good alright what's next we want to add some complexity to this so let's say we delete some of these we make uh, one up here and maybe another one up here so let's play test this and see if we can even uh, manage to win. Okay, well not win, but see if we don't fall off the world. Okay. Alright, see I can't get up over there, so I'm going to have to make it so I can. Let's say I just move this down here and this down over there. That'll be good enough, I think. <clears throat> so how are we going to win this level? We will create another active object place it over here. We will clear it and just make a circle, green circle because green is the color of victory. Okay, make it right over there. I'm going to rename this, oh forgot, win, and I'll rename the purple to be purple obstacle. It's easier to keep track of things. Over here, you, you know, you can see all the objects you're using in this particular frame. And having them labeled makes it a little easier to keep track of. Alright, so there's this, and I'll have some text 
basic text is easiest done through something called a string object. It's really easy because you can just place it in your level. You can click it, you know, change the dimension of it, come over here to its properties and go to text options. You know, you can change its font uh, type, you know, style and size. I'm going to go to 72. Come back over here and let's say green again since green is the color of victory. Double click it, highlight your text, and we will call it winner. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Okay. So we'll have it like this, and we'll also come back to the properties and we'll have a new paragraph and we'll call it loser. Okay, so if we play our level now, then as you can see, winner is there by default. And I can go over here and just go up to here and nothing's happening. I can even fall off the level and then player's just kind of screwed since nothing else is happening. We're going to fix all that right now. Alright, we're going to go back to our event editor. And we are going to create some new events. Let's say the start of the level, this is our string object right here. We don't want this to be visible, so we're going to change the visibility, make object invisible. So from the start of the level, it won't show up. Alright, next we're going to go and create a new collision. De collision detection, sorry. Right click the player and go collisions, uh, overlapping another object, and click win. That's our circle, our victory circle. Okay, so when we collide with that, let's go ahead and get rid of it and say destroy. And then we also want our text to reappear. So we'll go to visibility, reappear. And let's say at this point we don't want our player to be able to move around anymore. So we go player control, ignore control. So let's test that out really quick. All right, so we're playing, we're jumping, we're jumping, we get to the victory. You can no longer move, and the winning text shows up. Great. So what happens if the player loses? We'll go over here, and let's see if I this is going to work. I'm not positive if it is or not, since it's been so long since I've even tried to make a game like this. OK. So basically, we're going to click all the arrows, leaves top, leaves right, leaves bottom. Click OK. Player leaves the play area. We are going to go ignore control. And we are. Actually, it doesn't matter if we do that or not. So I'm going to get rid of it. Okay, we. Then we want to make the test visible again. Right click it again. We want to set another event to set, set the paragraph to loser. Now. Another cool thing we can do is set the color of the text. Since they are no longer, you know, they're no longer a winner, so green would not be an appropriate color. Let's make it red. Not to say that losers are red. The player itself is red, so how can you be a loser? But we'll just need some contrast to it all. Okay, let's play test this. Let's see if it works right off the bat. Yes, it does. You are a loser for going off the frame. All right. So what else can we add to this in a few minutes? Um, huh. How about a simple moving obstacle that comes up and down out of here? Really quick, we'll choose an active object. We'll make this a yellow square. Yeah, yellow square. Click OK. Then come over here to its properties. Go to movement. Go to movement type and go to path. We'll edit the path and go to new line. That already shows a line over here how you want it to move. We'll just move it straight down out of frame, not too far out of frame. We'll click right there, and this is all we need. So then, under options, we'll go to loop the movement and reverse at end. We'll try it out for a second. And that'll automatically show the object moving up and down. All right, good. But we need to set up. <sighs> Great. Well, I can't do it right now. I'll do it in the next tutorial.